Hi there, welcome to Life by Randy's Conversation Corner, For You in 44. Today's special guest is my dear friend, Stacy Newman. Hi, Stacy, welcome. Hey, Randy, it's great to see you. You too, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Very excited about this. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm so excited too. And so we've got so much to share. And we hope that uh, as time goes on, you'll be um, one of our uh, very special guests to give us some tips and join us on, on our journey as we journey into joy. Uh, you and I have known each other for a good number of years now, and you have been such a blessing to me personally to my husband, to my whole family, and to my friends that your lives that that you've touched, um, you've touched their lives in such very special ways. And so I want to share with, uh, with our audience today, uh, you your giftings, um, your healing techniques, and just really who you are and how you do what you do. Um, so Stacy, I'm going to give you the floor. Um, we're going to say um, uh, Stacy is trained in Eden Energy. Uh, there's this book here that uh, is kind of a manual of mine, uh, and um, it's Donna Eden, and stacy has been trained in um, Eden Energy Techniques, And uh, but I have the privilege of having Stacey uh, work with me in a hybrid of energy work that she's also going to explain. So Stacey, could you tell us a little bit about uh, energy medicine and Eden Energy to start off with, please? So I studied with Donna Eden and um, her her crew basically about 10 years ago. I became certified in 2012, and I learned to work with nine different energy systems. And a lot of what Donna teaches is self-care. So I pass that along to my clients. There's a daily energy routine. There are specific techniques to work with different energy systems like the meridian, the energy flows, the chakras, grounding, working with your aura. Um, so I had intense training over two years for that and learned how to work with clients, how to test energy. Even she's taught thousands of us by now mm -hmm. um, how to test energy without having to see it. She sees energy. But there's, there's techniques for those of us who experience it differently. And that's been really valuable. And since that training, I've gone on to work with Ellen Meredith. And I must share her book, The Language Your Body Speaks. She is phenomenal and changed my life. I learned a technique from her that cleared my life-threatening allergies. Wow. That's amazing. And, and so could you explain a little bit about the um, science behind it? Because uh, when you work on me, you, you know the science of the body, you know the meridians. It's, is, it from, is it ancient Chinese medicine and the meridians, what the origins of it? Because you, you, uh, um, you blow me away sometimes with the knowledge of your knowledge of the body systems and how to work with it. Yes, so traditional Chinese medicine dates back at least 3,000 years, probably much longer than that. And it amazes me. I work with the five element system, which really talks about the interactions of the different rhythms of the body, of the emotions, of the energies. And each of the meridians belongs on one of the five elements. And so if we're working, say, with it's springtime, so we want to be looking at liver energy right now, which is all about creating the new things, bringing new things to life. It is go, go, go. And when liver becomes out of balance, it can get frustrated because it's impatient. <laughs> it wants to make things happen. Um, so not only does it impact the physical liver and gallbladder, they, they're paired on the wood element, which is springtime. Um, so sometimes there's, there can be a physical reaction. There can be an emotional part of it. Um, but imbalance almost always shows up in your energies first. It starts to manifest in your field before it becomes physical. So a lot of what we do is look for the messages, not the symptoms, because at that point, it's just your body waving a flag saying something's wrong. 
So the way I like to describe it is I don't play whack-a-mole with the sy symptoms. I don't want to just go after every single one that pops up. I want to lift the box up, set it aside and see what's happening under the Almost always there's an emotional component, something you've been raised with, raised to believe, uh, frequently worthiness, self-doubt, all of those things come into play with physical imbalance. And so there's ways of working with the energies of just sparking, helping you rekindle your joy. And that heals everything. And you've done that with me for years, going back to uh, a lot of women have thyroid disease. And, and I was one of them um, from a hyper uh, active thyroid, hyperthyroidism to hypo. And you cleared both of those for me without medication. And can you walk us through as a, an example of that when, when you saw me? Uh, and, and I, I went to you and we have our own story. We'll maybe share some time about, um, uh, the, uh, divine intervention back at the yoga studio, uh, uh, when, uh, I was uh, struggling with some other issues and so that you, you, uh, diagnosed the thyroid with the, uh, fire element. And it, it, so as an example, could you tell our audience about how, how that, what you did and, and how you did it, and then how you actually see and work with these energies. It's such a gift. I will try my best. And I healed the same thing in myself. I had an overactive thyroid and I was very close to having it removed. I had a deal with myself that I would clear it energetically. And if I couldn't, and my appointment date came up, I would go and have a medical intervention. Well, I called the office about two weeks before my appointment and said, I'm fine. I'm not coming in. And my levels have been checked and I'm fine. So it's beautiful. But usually the thyroid is governed by a system called triple warmer. And that is our fight, fight and flight response. And it is also, it sits on the fire element. Fire is, is your guardian. It's trying to keep you safe. And what happens frequently, this is, this is a general statement, but it, is, it does not apply to every thyroid issue. Okay, so everyone is a little bit different. So we would have to look at individual energies. But as a broad statement, triple warmers involved with thyroid issues. And its partner, circulation sex or the pericardium, is involved in so many hormonal issues. So they go hand in hand. It's about the stress response. Um, it's, so it, it's challenging to put it into words because I don't have the, the medical training, but I have the experience of working with myself and others. Yes. Um, but what happens like with Graves' disease, what we both dealt with, the dry eyes, the dryness, everything's tight and hot flashes and all that lovely stuff and, and just dropping weights like for no reason right. and palpitations. That was all overactive thyroid. And that was triple warmer, um, just totally overactive. Mm -hmm. Completely on alert, triple warmer tries to keep you safe from from the bear that's down the path. That's what it evolved for, was to keep you safe from those life-threatening things. But now it thinks there might be a bear in the kitchen or that the chemicals in your foods are life-threatening or the Wi-Fi that we're exposed to all the time. All of that stuff we did not evolve for. So triple warmers on high alert all the time, trying to keep us safe. And can I mention the source of your hot flashes sure. related to thyroid. Yeah. So this was fascinating to me. And this is a, a slightly different way. It shows you how things can manifest differently. So in Randy's case, um, stress, being around some people would make her aura trick to protect her. Almost created a greenhouse. And the hot flashes were crazy. <laughs> so, and every time she's able to release the stress, 
and expand your aura. The temperature went down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And the moisture comes back to the eyes. <laughs> so, um, to the so point, Stacey, you would work on me and water is pouring out of my eyes because yes. what we're reducing the fire, right? In the, yes. in the body, uh, yes. triple warmer, calming down that, is that a meridian or is that a, what, what would you, it's on a particular it is, meridian? It is both a meridian and Donna even sees it as its, its own energy system. Yeah. So it is. It is one of the traditional meridians of Chinese medicine, but it does not govern an organ. So just like the um, circulation sex or pericardium doesn't have a specific organ, those two both sit on fire along with heart and small intestine. So, so they're protecting the heart. And small intestine is all about deciding what's good for you and what isn't. So, so they're very related and interconnected. But it's that fire element, when it goes really overactive, needs water. It needs the water element of kidney and bladder, um, or just pieces of the, the water element, the flow, the coolness, to help bring that, the flames down. It really works. Now, for part of your... Um, uh, gifting, and it's interesting, I just recently heard someone say, imagination is our superpower. And I love that because when we're children, we have these active imaginations. And as, as we grow older, we're not encouraged in those imaginations. I remember when I was younger and I would you know, look, lay on, lie on the uh, grass and look up at the clouds and imagine what they would be. Or let's say we had imaginary friends and, and we're, we're not often encouraged in imagination. And by the time you get to adulthood and with all the stresses, that imagination is all but gone. And in this work, in this energy work that really works, uh, imagination is so important. And I know when you, we have uh, sessions together, you encourage me to imagine. And, and I, I've got my own story with regard to imagination and a stage four disease I've just been healed of, uh, part, in part because of the energy work and the imagination. Could you speak to how powerful that is? It is everything. It's everything. It absolutely is everything to be open to possibilities yeah. and not stuck in a diagnosis means a, sense, a death sentence. It definitely is not. There's always a message and it's about being open to getting to know the messenger, getting to dialogue with your own energies, um, trusting that there's are more support around you than you can possibly see or know. Um, and just being open to the stories that show up with the energies um, or what these flags of symptoms are asking for. And also being open to, well, what does my body want? in order to heal. Some of the work that, I, especially the work that I've done with Ellen Meredith is based on communicating with your body. And it is not done in a spoken language. It's done in symbolism and metaphor. And it's all imagination. And one of the most important pieces that I learned about that was about using imagination is you know if the story comes to you full blown that you've got far more information than you could have created without sitting for hours then trust it yes trust it because that is being that's a gift to you that it means something and you can take your time to tear it apart and explore it but but trust that there is truth in it. Yes, absolutely. And maybe this is a, a good segue uh, to go into what recently happened with me and what we just walked through the last five, six months. So uh, I was uh, diagnosed uh, with a um, 
stage four, which is an advanced, of course, uh, uh, cancer. And as uh, I was walking out of the hospital, the Cleveland Clinic, knowing that, uh, not knowing the extent, but knowing that it was cancer, I had a uh, breast tumor. I texted Stacy right away. And Stacy texted me back. This is a messenger. And if you would listen to what, what the message is, um, you know, this, um, you, I'm not, I'm not quite sure exactly what, what those words were, but you said this was a messenger, Stacy. if you could take it from there and, and see what you saw and how we moved through that very quickly to within five months from being stage four, uh, having a no evidence of disease PET scan completely clear of cancer, including the breast, in, including the no breast tumor any longer without surgery, without radiation, without chemo. So first, I want to just credit Randy for being so curious and in tune and being a great meditator and opening up to possibility and manifestation. So that helps. Just her experience with that made it easier to dive right in. Yes. So she already had the discipline yeah. of doing that. So that was very helpful. Um but messengers. So what I learned from Ellen and I have started to apply to myself and my clients is um, when something big comes up, even when something little comes up, but when something big comes up, just stop and say, what's your name? Yes. What do you need? What do, what do you need? What are you asking me to do? And sometimes that's, Request is to slow down, take the time to heal. Um, sometimes it's take better care of your body, move more. And sometimes it's know that you're worthy. Yes. Allow yourself to receive. And breast cancer, that is almost always the message is women who develop breast cancer frequently give, give, give. There's nothing left. Yes. And so this is about receiving, receiving the love, receiving the support, and just knowing that you're worthy. So yes. that's, that's a huge message. But these messengers can, they can be silly. They can be, um, I had a chronic headache for a little while. He told me his name was Irving. <laughs> Didn't tell me much more. He went away pretty soon after that. <laughs> so you just it's it's bizarre every single messenger is different they have their own names sometimes the names are meaningful um in your case I, it was fascinating right. and but it's also helpful in sessions to have that messenger to speak to so not only speaking to Randy and her energies, but being able to speak to um, the messenger and learn to interact and find out what's needed. You know, and, and it goes back to the imagination. And I was, uh, uh, Stacy, you um, have encouraged me over, over the years to, you go with your gut, you go with your intuition, with the first thing that pops into your mind, not to overthink things, right? So in this world we live in, and depending on how your brain is wired, uh, mine, I can tend to overthink or be analytical and uh, too analytical, which uh, can cut both ways. And, and, and here to, um, we lose that childlike faith, if you will, the childlike imagination and the childlike faith to be spontaneous and to trust that what you're hearing is, is a message and is the truth. And, and so uh, Stacy did encourage me to uh, name my breast tumor and essentially develop a relationship with it. And I named her Melissa. That was the first name that came to, to mind. And one session, we had a profound experience with Melissa uh, actually, right, transforming uh, into an owl. And 
it, it had been all over my rib cage, the cancer, and that was the branches of the tree. And she flew away, right? And perched on a, on a branch of a big, beautiful tree. And, and over, over time, we've, you know, I would look at Melissa. Melissa was outside of my body. And perhaps that was the time where the cancer actually left. I'm within a matter of, of, uh, of, of weeks, actually. And, and uh, coming full circle, Stacy, I think our, our last session, Melissa means honey or honeybee. Mm -hmm. And that was the honey was coming in to savor the sweetness of life and to heal my bones where the cancer was. And so these beautiful messages, that's what it's like to have a session with Stacy. And it's, it's brilliant. It's genius. And yet it's simple in childlike faith. Um, but but I, I want to make it clear for our, our viewers, though, that it is grounded in, in, in science, in, the, in, the, in, in ancient Chinese medicine, and in how the body works and working with our own unique energies. And so, I will provide some, some resources for that that Randy can post on her website. Great. And the so. acupressure points, uh, very, very, very powerful. Um, that uh, as um, can you can you speak to that, the acupressure points and how you work with with that and even now remotely or virtually. Uh, where you don't have to work through the densities of the body being in person. So Stacy now has a global clientele. And so she can do it out of her very special place at home. It's been quite a year. <laughs> so, um, so I, I mean, I love working in person with people because there's nothing that replaces touch. But um, I set up a crystal grid on my table so I can visualize the body and so it has all the chakras and hands and feet so I can just really be there but as soon as we start talking I do this over speakerphone because I like having the, the voice hearing the voice and being able to talk to each other to see what's happening I love having feedback uh, however the client's experiencing what's going on um, but as soon as we connect I can feel what's happening in front of me and I can energy test your aura, um, meridians, and any, any of the systems, and and tune in and see what's happening. And with every session, it's like just finding the way in brings balance. I don't have to fine tune all of the pieces. Sometimes it's just releasing some reactivity so your aura is functioning properly that brings groundedness. And sometimes working with one of the chakras will balance the meridian. So you don't have to fix every little thing. It's right. just what is, what's getting my attention in the moment? And, or what are you bringing up? What's happening for the client? Oh, I, I'm starting to feel this, the pain is moving or whatever. So we'll look for wind that travels through the body. That's another Chinese medicine um, technique to, release men to the body. Um, so, but you, going back to acupressure, so the acupoints are points along meridian lines. Now let's go back to our friend Triple Warmer. So it actually starts on the ring finger and goes up and over the shoulder and ends of the temple. So when we really want to work with triple warmer, this end point is very powerful, both as a place of communication and a place to relax it. And if you want to try this, you can just smooth back behind your ears. You're tracing triple warmer backwards. And that will just bring you down your stress. It can help with some hot flashes. It can help with your stress level. Just bring it back yourself bring it to your face and it's very calming well that yeah. reminds me early on you 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 told me what uh, you know when when people are upset they they'll do this or 
put their hand on their head. And isn't that instinctively calming triple warmer or some of the points? These are triple warmer. Stomach. Stomach. It's also stomach, but they're the main neurovascular points. And the neurovasculars are related to emotions. So very light, light touch. This restores blood flow to the forebrain. So if you're really stressed and you can't even think because your renals are just kicked in high gear, hold it like this really lightly. Just eventually you won't be able to even think about what was bothering you. And you can not truly do this. I call this the, the oh my good points. <laughs> <laughs> and common meridians right here and it has some points around here too. And that's very grounding. Because while stomach starts here, it goes all the way down your body and off the second toe. And it's on earth now, so it grounds you. So this is what the importance of grounding. So we're it, we're electromagnetic beings, right? So we've got electrical charges. That's what keeps us alive. Is is that fair to say? Oh, absolutely. Okay, and and so uh, why why is it uh, important to ground? And what does it look like to ground? Then there's a few aspects to grounding. So. And one of the more important ones is actually that electrical energy can build up in your body and it needs to release. Mm -hmm. So there's points, there's your tailbone and there's points on the feet that will help that energy release into the earth, like your personal lightning rod. And if they're frozen, it's really hard for that to happen. And it feels really jangly, so you get really anxious. So just allowing that to release. Um, your feet and the best way to um have that happen is to walk barefoot on wet grass so like in the morning dew it's the best thing um but also at the bottom of the foot so i'll just show my hand right here like the ball of your foot so right there um is the first point on kidney meridian and you have energetic tap roots that come from there and go into the earth and bring nourishing earth energy up into your body. And when kidney starts to move forward, it moves the entire meridian system forward in one giant loop. There are 12 meridians that are part of this loop. And 12 meridians? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they go in a very specific order based on the time of day. So they feed each other. Well, and it, so it's interesting. Talking about childlike faith, being a child again, walking, mm -hmm. running barefoot on wet grass. Yes. I, what what child didn't didn't do that? I don't know what the children do now with uh, being inside or on on their devices all the time. Um, but right, it's that's very childlike, and yeah. in in how important that 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 is. Yes, and another piece of grounding that people don't typically think of is your crown needs to be open to receive and release. So because everything flows, the energies of the heart, we would study heart math, um, creates this big torus flow. And it just goes out and your energies go and down and back up. And if they get stuck here, because you're stuck in your head so much and stuck in your thoughts, it's hard to ground them bringing that energy back up. The flow stops. So you're feeding yourself with earth energy. And what I love to tell my clients is that just being born on this planet, being an earth being, entitles you to earth energy. No strings attached. Oh, but, <laughs> and everything functions better when your polarities, when, when your energies are in sync with the earth. And one more very simple thing you can do is you can take the back of a spoon, a stainless steel spoon, so grab one from the kitchen, and you rub it on the bottom of your feet. So you take the first part and just rub it. And 30 seconds or so on each foot, that restores your polarity and will put you in sync with the earth. So what is polarity? 
So polarity is like a battery has a positive and negative. Um, so our bodies do too. And they have a north and a south. So north of the head, south of the feet. And what you need is the earth. The surface of the earth is north. Inside it would be south. So, so you want the south that's your, the base of your foot to connect to the north of the earth. That's strong. Otherwise, they repel. So energies can get frozen, and they just won't move energy at all. They can flip, and they're going to repel each other. Uh, so this really keeps you in sync with the energies of the earth. Um, and then everything in your body functions better. Yes. Well, uh, as another example, you helped out, uh, well, you've helped out a number of my friends and family, uh, but uh, specifically with uh, the ringing in the ears, and I know that's a big problem, uh, and it seems like it's more common with men than women. Uh, that's just been my personal experience. It's just anecdotal on, on my part. Uh, could you explain some uh, some ways that you diagnosed and helped some clients walk through that kind of one would think right hearing things they don't want to hear and trying to shut it out. So walk through the energetic causes of that and how you actually cleared it in, in one session in short order. <laughs> okay. First, it's a really, it can be a very complex issue because frequently it is a brain thing. So I'm not always successful with it. Okay. So, so just putting that out there, everyone has their own reason for this happening. Okay. Um, but in the case that you're referring to, there, there was a divorce. And the ex was very, very vocal and not saying those things. And the client was basically trying not to hear it anymore, just did not want to hear it. And... So their ears developed what's called vortexes and that spinning energy. And it was actually pulling energy in both sides. So we were able to clear that out. Vortexes will distort energy. So um, noise coming in, even from, from a room, from people talking across the room would get distorted and really loud. So that balanced out. Working with kidney energy, kidney governs the ears. So um, that kidney energy that comes up from the earth, that water flow, that's, um, it will help the ears tremendously. Um, I'm going to bring up one other issue that I've seen a lot and I've experienced myself is I will get intermittent tinnitus. And it really feels like there's messages coming in. It's always what I'm laying down at night and it doesn't last long. It's just there and it feels like someone's talking to me. Um, for some people, this happens almost constantly. So other noises are just, it's just too much. Um, I'm gonna share this from also from Ellen because it's just so silly and it works when, when it's like you're getting messages and your brain can't process them. The Dumbo ears, and it remember Dumbo the elephant. We had these <laughs> giant ears. So, putting your fingers back behind here, and you're just allowing yourself to fly. Open up to those messages. Raise your vibration. Raise your radiance. I am not going to make big elephant calls right now, but you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> And they quite fill you with it. But this will help you take more in and and be more in tune with the messages that are coming. So uh, it's just another way of approaching it. There's also brain approaches. Sometimes it's it's something's going on in the brain, something's going on with physically with the ears. So there's there's a lot of reasons. Um, some will correct with energy work. I, I'm still working with some people. <laughs> we haven't given up. <laughs> but, um, but so far, those have been the really great ways of working. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are energetic causes to disease, right? Is that 
Um, I think that that's fair to say. Now we're not, we're not doctors and we're not giving medical advice and from our personal experiences and, and that which we've read and certainly what I've profoundly experienced with, with you and having you and I work together for so many years. Um, it, uh, from your perspective, the percentage of energetic or emotional causes, energetic causes to disease would be, would you venture? I guess. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Except if you're born with something, if you're born missing a limb or um, type one diabetes, things, things that are congenital are part of our path and it's how we cope um, through this life. So it might be a contract that you created coming in with it. So that's not something that's easily correctable right? Um, by using energies, but it can definitely support you in um, harnessing your radiance and joy. And people thrive even if they're they're born with things that aren't. It's like this is part of why we're here, and we are not perfect beings. So otherwise, we wouldn't be embodied. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> but um, illnesses that develop, especially based on lifestyle um, or environmental, um, there's there's emotional there's an emotional energetic piece behind every. And I, I find it uh, fascinating that the world-renowned Cleveland Clinic uh, has Eden Energy Healers as well as Reiki Healers. And I believe it started on their cardiology floors uh, to, to heal that they ran experiments and those that were worked on with Eden Energy and or Reiki uh, performed better after surgery. And so how familiar are you with, I know that you are in private practice uh, for yourself. And uh, I believe that you do work with Ellen Meredith uh, on, on, on some level. And we could talk about that in the shift network. Um, yes. And some um, doctors, world renowned doctors, physicians uh, do understand that energy medicine is very important Otherwise, they wouldn't uh, make these offerings available. And I have a few as clients, which is just delights me. Physicians <laughs> so. as clients, right? Yes. yes. So it's wonderful because by working with them, and I have one who is just starting. She's, she's um, a resident now. And I'm just thrilled because she's learning this at the beginning of her career. So I'm excited for for their eventual patients and who they're going to touch. So um, I we am not shifting. We might be shifting into more healing centers versus medical centers, or is that just a, a dream of mine? Oh, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I do hope. I do see some of that. I don't know how long it's going to take, but as long as we keep moving in that direction. Yes. So... I'm not familiar with the studies at the clinic, but they don't surprise me. I know Donna Eden and her husband, David Einstein, were invited to the clinic to do grand rounds a few years ago. And so they were definitely embraced. And it was, from what I understand, it was a really good session. So there's, so their, their teaching have been embraced and it's, it's hard for some people trained in Western medicine to wrap their heads around how this could be, could work, but right. when they do, it's a beautiful thing. Exactly. Right. Right. So, yeah. It's just like your doctor saying, you know, just keep doing the energy work. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, where else were we going with that? <laughs> yeah. The shift network. So I don't know if uh, our viewers are familiar with the shift network. So uh, Stacy, if you want to uh, describe that and, and your alliance with uh, Ellen Meredith and, and how you have developed your hybrid, uh, I, th those are my words, hi hybrid energy medicine work that is specific to Stacy Newman. Yeah. 
Okay, I will do my best. So um, I guess I'll start with that. So I call myself an intuitive energy medicine practitioner. And Excellent. because I use my intuition and it guides what I have learned. Like um, I have the, the time that I've spent studying acupressure and the chakras and all, all of the energy systems and how they work together. So that's, that knowledge is there. And I use my intuition to run with it and to be open to messages. So, and sometimes that even goes to past lives or like one of my friends calls them alternate expressions because it's just another lifetime or a possibility of a lifetime. And it's fascinating because things come through there too. Um, so that's what I do. And I do it, like I described, I do it remotely over the phone and I, this, this past few months, I've actually taken on more clients who live very far away from me and some in the Netherlands. And I've worked on some of the Germany as well. And it's delightful. It is so much fun. So um, anyways, a lot of this is because of my connection to Ellen Meredith. And she is on the Shift Network now. Shift is a place to study. Um, they offer many classes. Um, Usually their intro classes are seven weeks. And then Ellen did a second class, which was 12 weeks that went very deep. And I got to be a teaching assistant for her for that 12 week class and along with two other women. And it was so much fun. So we facilitated the Facebook group, answering questions and just kind of delving deeply into the work. And it was absolutely delightful. So Ellen's classes, as well as many others, are available on demand on the Shift Network now. So, and so you can study at your own pace. Everything's on video, and they have all sorts of other resources that go with the classes, um, and many, many different topics, um, but all about wellness and healing. So, Fabulous. it's a great place to go if if you want to learn anything about taking care of yourself and and really changing. In your life. And doesn't it all begin with us and making a decision of self care? And easier said than done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Absolutely. But that is what it comes down to. And having to love yourself enough and then you've got an, enough love to give others. So it's it's kind of when you're on an airplane and they're going through the safety measures and drills. You put the the mask on yourself first, mm -hmm. and that, and then attend to the children, right? And 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 others. Save yourself and, first, and then you're you're good for the rest of the world. And that is the lesson of the Earth element. Is so that right? It, it is. <laughs> so Earth element can overgive. So it's about remembering self compassion and self care. So that you have enough to go away. And and Stacy, we could talk for hours, and I and I hope I hope we will get that opportunity in in snippets throughout uh, uh, life by Randy because there's so much to learn from you, uh, even just talking about the elements and 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 beginning there and and helping raise awareness and just educate um, what is energy work? What are our bodies exactly? And, and how we interface with our own bodies as it relates to the environments we're in. And I think now is the time to be doing this. I'm seeing a hunger for this kind of knowledge, uh, an expansion, a, a greater awareness and a greater acceptance of this is considered, I guess, alternative. Um, alternative has gotten a bad stigma, I say in addition to, uh, because I, as you know, have worked the best, what I think is with Western medicine with the cancer uh, that I worked through, um, but em employed all of the other uh, tools um, that I firmly believe in. And why not have a full panoply uh, of, of healing modalities, right, at our disposal. And it just takes an open mind, a little open mind, and a willingness to step forward. As far as the question about what's most gratifying, well, 
success stories like you. They're <laughs> just amazing. Um, let's see. I also, I had a blast creating um, a card deck with my friend Veronica Torres, who is a channel. And it's called Tools for the Sensitive Soul. And there's more about that on my website, which is um, sweetenergies.net. And it was a lot of fun to put that together because I always, I grew up being told I was too sensitive. And that's no longer hurtful. That is, I embrace that, but I know how to. I, yes. And I know how to take care of my own energies and to recognize when something is not mine and know that I don't need to take on other people's stuff deeply to process it, that I can be present and compassionate and still have it just outside of my field. <laughs> and, and it's okay. And so so we shared a lot of tools, um, energy medicine exercises, um, essential oils and how to use them, and also tools for conscious living, like, say, like no is a complete statement. Complete sense. You can say no and set a boundary. Yes. So, <laughs> so that was, I had so much fun with that. And and I'm still learning. I'm always learning. So I just go where I'm fascinated. Yeah. Tell me what's next. Oh, Stacy, you're so delightful. And you were such a gift <laughs> to me and a gift to the world. So thank you. And we'll have your... Um, uh, links below. Uh, so uh, our audience will know how to reach you uh, okay. how you can make an appointment with you. Um, go to your website. We'll put the shift network information there as well. And Ellen, Ellen Meredith's book and Don, uh, Donna Eden's information. So uh, we could, they can always go to my website as well. Uh, lifebyrandy.com uh, for a list of other resources too, because we are here to share our story and to have these amazing conversations so that those who are called can tune in and and learn and really take hold of principles and techniques and a way of being to truly live in joy. Isn't that what it's all about? It is absolutely what it's about. Well, thank you, Stacy. Thank you for sharing your time with me and for all of us at Life by Randy. And we'll uh, talk again very, very soon. I look forward to it. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye, Stacey.